We've been discussing the place that competition has in our lives as individuals, as families, and as people in the world. I'd now like to turn our attention to the question, having discussed the role of competition, how do we distinguish good and bad competition? How do we analyze, is this competition fruitful? Is this competition bad for us? I'd like to ask you, Carolyn, if you have any thoughts on how we measure competition. Is it being helpful or is it being destructive? I think uh, competition becomes destructive in three situations. First is when we compete all the time. We don't even know when to turn it off. So people just sort of naturally compete with their peers, their colleagues, their friends, and even sometimes family. So it's just competing all the time. And then related to that, second is, then people need to win. If they don't win, they don't know who they are. And they either diminish themselves or diminish others when that's the case. And then the third is then the type of actions and tactics we take because that competition and the need to win consumes us. And I think that's when competition goes awry. And that's very good, very helpful, thank you. And, and Tim, in terms of measurement, you know, we people who work often have rankings and things like that. I mean, the university is ranked and nationally, and we see this among almost every body we belong to, all kinds of rankings. How is that helpful? How can it be unhelpful? You know, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, for competition, we need some metric by which to declare you win and you lose. Um, and even in business, we can, uh, there's certainly examples where we pick the wrong metric. So example in marketing, uh, we can, uh, uh, this is an old example, is the people fighting over market share. Where they're fighting over market share so much that they put themselves out of business because they uh, don't have any money left to pay the, uh, pay the employees. And I think we do that in our own life if we pick the wrong thing to measure success by. So for uh, the simple things, uh, how much money you make, uh, what's your title? Um, um, how many friends uh, are on your Facebook page. Um, and the unfortunate part of it is that sooner or later, if you're like most people, you can be taken down a notch. Um, you're not going to be the person making the most, uh, most money, and even if that were the right metric. Uh, we're always going to run into situations where we don't succeed or beat uh, others. Um, and, and trying to measure in that sort of um, losing the competition can be a very painful uh, process. And uh, Father, I just want to say, there are studies which show that when people lose status, the part of their brain that processes is the same part that processes physical pain. And so as humans, somehow status um, is extremely important to us and therefore it calls for us to really sort of deeply reflect um, who we are and not just let status drive the whole identity. I also think that in this culture there is a bad habit and it's a habit of the winner takes all. If you were not number one, you got nothing. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea of a person losing by one point or one half of a second all of that accomplishments become nothing. And I think we really need to challenge that way of thinking so that the one who's number five, number six, who also achieved a lot, should know what has been gained. You know, even though you didn't walk away with the ribbon, but all of the achievement and the real substantive progress which has been made is as real. So I think we also need to take on that, that the real achievements behind or reflected in these competitions cannot just be um, um, negated because we didn't get the one ribbon. So somehow this again sort of ties to this, this measure. What, what is the measure by which I'm declared the, the, the winner or loser? And it, it, if we sit back and reflect, in any one given instance, it's probably pretty arbitrary. And if we try and think a little bit more broader, it goes to this issue of, well, what is a good life? Um, certainly the goodness of my life is not measured by the length of my title or my paycheck. Um, and, and certainly as Catholics and as Christians, we've got some other measure that should help us transcend whatever these, uh, uh, the particular competitions are that, that we're involved in. Uh, so for instance, uh, um, uh, Brother Andre uh, recently uh, canonized, uh, a slight small janitor um, certainly didn't win any prizes uh, for uh, athletics or um, um, accolades in terms of uh, money or whatnot, but look at the, the, the value that his life had uh, to so many people. Mm -hmm. And how we think of success or effectiveness, you know, they think of, I'm just thinking of St. Jean Vianney, the curé of ours, 
barely made it through school. He had trouble passing any of his classes. He was never top of the class. He was always last in the class, almost didn't graduate. And yet his whole life was devoted to the service of God's people in a way that his success was measured not by the academic standards of that time or any time, but rather by the self-gift he made to others and that generosity to other people. And I think for me, a gift of getting a bit older is to understand the blessings in my life um, and to just understand how profound those blessings are so that you no longer just tie yourself to winning or to more money, uh, but just to know, wow, the gifts that God has given us, whether it's in the way of people in our lives, our spouses, our family, but also talents, which we have. And so then it becomes a sense of returning the gift using mm -hmm. those talents as best as you can, and to appreciate that nobody's talents are ever wasted, um, that in God's eyes there's not a more important or less important talent. And so understanding the blessings, um, understanding the responsibility to really develop those blessings, and finally to use those blessings for other people also. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the earlier section, we talked about competition being good, and we, we said it helps bring out the best uh, in us. And now as we reflect, well, when does competition go awry, when it is a, a, a bad thing, is when we pursue it for its own sake or for our own, uh, for our own ego. Um, to the extent that I think we can ask ourselves, are we pursuing excellence in the service of others or in the service of ourselves? And if it's really sort of a self-centered pursuit of excellence and you have to win for that reason, then certainly I think that's a, a, a sign that is problematic. One of the most frequent questions that's asked of us, we were ranked number one um, as an undergraduate business school. And the question always is, what are you going to do to maintain that position? And I said, nothing. And the reason is that we do what we do not for the ranking. Uh, we do what we do because it's our responsibility to educate our students in the best way possible. We've never looked at where our ranking is and what we need to do. We've always looked at teaching evaluations. We look at our curriculum and we say, what is missing? What is working? What do we need to do? And so is to keep focused on sort of our mission is to educate. Our mission is not to win. And uh, if we are ranked well, that's great. But if we're not, we're not going to hang our head. And we're not going to do things just for the rankings. Um, and actually, I've talked to people who are really into winning. And you will find that they actually don't enjoy the winning. Because the next question is, what did we lose it? What do I have to do to keep on winning? And actually, that takes away the joy of sure. that type of recognition. What's that banner that hangs in Mendoza College? We it's, say we're number one is a responsibility. That's a beautiful way of thinking about it. You know, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, the great Trappist Cistercian monastic founder and abbot, would ask himself again and again the simple question, ad quid venisti, probably loosely translated, what are you doing this for? Why are you doing this? And I think in a rat race kind of world where we're just constantly racing, if we don't stop, step back and ask ourselves, why am I doing all this? we can easily get pulled into it, and that's when I think competition becomes ultimately self-destructive in hurting us. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Carolyn, very much. Thank you.